Hey everybody, Bill Nichols, Bill Nichols TV. Today, I've got a new charging station from DJI. I don't think most people have seen this. You might see it advertised on some of the sites for sale. I think I'm the first person to get this. So DJI, full disclaimer, set this out, asked me to review it. And I will tell you that if you have a Ronin 2, an M200, or an Inspire 2 that you use for production and you have a challenge with your batteries, this is the piece of gear to get. Let's get into it. DJI TB50. You saw in the intro the quick spin around, open it up. I'm going to open this thing up, let's jump through it, and I'm going to tell you quite a bit about it and uh, what I think of it, how I've been using it, and um, how it's really helped me. When I'm uh, flying with my Inspire 2 or when I've taken my Inspire 2 on some commercials or some feature films, I generally have eight to ten batteries. Um, today I have six with me, the other four are at home. And one of the challenges that I have with the hubs is that they're not parallel charging. They charge in series, so one at a time. It takes a while to charge, and um, I've got to swap batteries out and get in. So if I have a few hours of shooting, I'm consistently going from like having 10 batteries to eight to six, then up to seven, then down to five. Like it kind of cascades down. And if I was to go all day long, I'm gonna run out of battery juice eventually, or I'm gonna get really close to it. The other issue that I have is sometimes I'll charge up all 10 of my batteries with the intent of going out and shooting all day and I'll just shoot for 20, 25 minutes because that's all that I have, or weather changes or schedule changes, then I've got eight batteries at 100% that I've got to figure out either how to discharge or to store and degrade them. You want to make sure that you're always storing them at 50% or 25% charge, um, and this is going to help you charge, maintain them, and discharge. So let's hop right into this thing. Uh, first off on the construction, it is built in an SKB Pelican style case. It's got a you know, full kind of trolley wheels here, uh, rolling wheels with a handle that pulls out fits in a carry-on this will carry 12 tb50 batteries it's pretty much all that you're going to need eight in the charge slots four in other slots then it'll carry your wb37s which are for your sentence controller or your crystal sky monitor a couple of the charging hubs for the crystal sky and uh let's open this thing up and take a look i have it stocked with batteries so right now i've got six batteries these four charging um, these two in the storage. Here's the WB37 batteries here. The WB, the WCH2, I think it is. Yeah, the WCH2 charging hub. Two, four, six, eight batteries. 10, 12 on the TB50s. Another little spot over here. You can throw another charging hub, various cables, whatever you want. And before I turn it on, I will uh, kind of go through what we have. So you've got your main power in here. So you just do a 110 into here. You got these two ports for your uh, sentence uh, charging, so you can charge the sentence off of this, or you can take this directly into the WCH2, two of them, and you can charge four of these batteries at once. Then you've got two five volt, two amp USBs here, so you can charge your iPhone, your iPad, whatever from there. You've got um, air intake here that flows across the batteries to maintain the temperature of the batteries, and you've got a hot, in a hot exhaust here. So sometimes when you're pulling these out right after you've flown, they're really hot and it's gonna take a little while for them to charge. When well, you dump them into here, the air's gonna go across. There's little channels in here for airflow. It's gonna help cool your batteries down. The air's gonna go through, suck back out, cool your batteries down to a stable charging temperature, then charge them all up. This will charge all eight batteries at one time, or you can put it into a quick charge mode, which will take them from 0% to 90% in 35 minutes four at a time. So what it will do is if you have this stocked with eight batteries, it'll find the two groups that have the highest charge already. So if you have four that are like, you know, 20%, 20%, 50%, 50%, you throw it into quick charge. It's going to take those two that are at 50% and it's going to charge them a lot quicker um, from zero to 90% in 35 minutes. I asked the DJI engineers, I've had some talks with them since I've received this because I had a ton of questions. Um, they did say you don't want to do that all the time, but if that's what you're doing on production, then um, it doesn't actually degrade the battery life. They've built the electronics into the battery so that it doesn't degrade it. I imagine it probably does a little bit, but through their measuring, they've said that there's not a measurable difference in the batteries when you charge in the quick charge mode than not. But you wouldn't want to do it all the time because then you're not getting the full power of this. The full kind of power of this thing is being able to pop eight batteries in here, run it off of power, and charge eight batteries at a time. So let's turn it on. Take a look at the menus, and I'm going to uh, kind of walk you through this. All right, so when I first turn this on, you're going to hear how loud it is. Then I'm going to put it into a different mode. Actually, I'll just take it out of, I'm going to take these batteries out. 
And we'll turn it on and run through menus. All right, so let's plug this in. So you plug in. You can hear it right there. A little bit of noise. Turn it on. Tells you everything you need to know right here. So right now it's in normal charge mode. You just say, okay. It tells you what it's charging. Right now it's not charging anything, but you have your A bank, B, C, and D. Gives you a diagram right on here. We'll throw two batteries in. You're going to hear this spin up, get a little bit of noise. So there you go. A little bit of noise. Um, you can change that, so we're going to do that. But right now, this is telling me that these two batteries are at 32 and 34%. In the current charge mode, it's going to take 43 minutes. They're currently about 19 degrees. Gives you the voltages, the amperage, everything. So I can go into the menu here and go to silent mode and hit OK. Come down, hit on. Now you can see it's going to take about 89 minutes to charge to full. They're 33% full right now. Uh, this silent mode is what you would want if you have to have this anywhere near the production area that you are. But if you're going to take this back into a trailer and charge or somewhere else that's not near anywhere that, you, that you're recording, don't worry about it. Throw it into normal mode. That normal mode is not the quick charge mode. Um, as this is going, I can just go ahead and add more batteries in here. So I've got this thing running all day long. I've got batteries that are just coming in and out of it. No problem. All right, so as it comes on, let's go into the menu. Turn the silent mode off. We're going to back out. Now, there you are. Now that it's initialized all the batteries, you can clearly hear that this is relatively loud. But if I had this away from me, and I'm speaking up, if I had this away from me, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But right now, I've got somewhere between 90 minutes and 40 minutes for these six batteries to charge. So in the next 90 minutes, all six are going to be charged. I've had two more in here, it'd be the same thing. I could do all four in about 90 minutes. I could switch it over to quick charge mode. It would take the two highest, so it would take these two here and these two here and bump them up. It would stop charging this. And it would take these from zero to 90% about 35 minutes. Okay, so now I'm just gonna run this with the two batteries in it so that the noise will be a little bit less. Because as you're putting more batteries in, it needs to bring more power. So that's why you hear the fan ramp up and it's gotta get more air to these ports. So let's go ahead and turn it on. We're going to put it back in a silent mode. Okay, now I can go to my battery information. And I can choose an individual battery. So if I go to B1, it's going to tell me this, this has had one charge cycle, brand new set of batteries. It gives me the serial number, the battery status, the version, the cell voltage, the temperature, and the voltage on it. And I can just scroll now through my various batteries with the up and down. So as I get to two, I see one and one. They should be the same. Quick tip, if you're not, when you buy your batteries, you get the little stickers from DJI, make sure that you're marking them so that they're the same, whether it's with numbers or letters, because you want to keep these in pairs and you want to keep using them at the same rate. So if you're not doing that, start doing it so that you keep them together and you're not using a battery that's been used you know, 35 times with one that's been used once. You want to pair these together, and that helps you keep the firmware consistent between them and everything else. So here's the menu right here. So silent charging, you can hear it's very quiet. Um, it's going to take about 90 minutes for these two. Right now, they're about 29, 30% full because I discharged them. So right now, they're charging. I could switch this to discharge and select a discharge amount, and it would bring them down to there, whether it's 50% or 25%. Um, I can go from 1 to 2 for the charging rate. So you'll see if I switch this. Quick charge. Battery considered full when it's 90%. So when it reads that these are 90%, it's going to turn off the quick charge mode. So we're going to say OK. Now we're going to see this reset. You're going to hear this ramp up really quick. And now, 24 minutes from now, these are going to be at 90% charge. So that's it, just 24 minutes to take them from 30% to 90%. Let's go ahead and get out of quick charge mode. And now we see they're going to take about 90 minutes, so about a third of the time, a little less than a third of the time. Like I said, I've got the, the pieces over here for the WB37 batteries. I can charge my Sendence controllers off of here, my iPad off of here, and overall, this is just an awesome system. Um, the other thing that I can do is when I get into here, uh, if I hook up through this little micro USB port here, I can hook this into the laptop, then download the newest firmware on the laptop to here, and I can upgrade the firmware across all my batteries at the same time. So if you've ever had the issue where you need to upgrade your batteries on your Inspire, 
you upgrade one set, you put them in there, you go through the whole update process, you do it again, you do it again, you do it again. Now I can put them in here, update them all to the same level at the same time. So now let's go into discharge mode. Now that these are at 33%, I'll show you what we have. If we go to discharge, let's say, do we want to discharge to 25%, which long-term storage, uh, maybe transporting, Long-term storage, other than that, 25%. You're done shooting for the day, you're gonna pack it up, but maybe you're gonna shoot you know, in the next few days or whatever, take them to 50%. The discharge does take a little while because it's gotta pull that energy out of them. But uh, right now these are at 33%, so I wanna take them to 25%. I'll just hit okay. It's gonna come up. It tells me they're at 34%, and it's starting to discharge them. You can hear that? There is no silent discharge, by the way. And now they're going to go down until they get to 25%, and then it's gonna shut off. Because I'm gonna turn this off so that we've got the um, stuff here. So overall, my thoughts on this and how this has changed. Um, so DJI reached out to me, asked me if I was interested in reviewing the TB50 battery station. And I'd been looking for something like this. I'd previously had a multiple charger that I'd bought for my Phantom 4, Phantom 4 Pro batteries uh, back in the day when I was using my Phantom. And very expensive, it worked really, really well. There's several of them out there, you can find them. Um, but I really wanted something for my Inspire batteries. And regardless of um, who I was going to get it from, I wanted it to have a couple of things. One, the ability to discharge, kind of condition the batteries, to charge them, and then I could carry it on with me. And this answers all of those questions, and it gives me a lot of options. Then being able to take 12 batteries with me in a carry-on, I mean, this is just ideal where, you know, these are sitting in here. I've still got room for six more batteries. You know, the four that I have at home and another pair if I got them. Um, if I've got multiple people flying with me on a day, so maybe there's two of us with Inspires or somebody's got a Ronin and Inspire, we're probably gonna be able to get through the day, all of us, with just one of these thrown into quick charge mode when we need new batteries and that's it. All right guys, so my overall thoughts on the TB50. One, it's not cheap, it's $1,199, but if you're buying this, it means that you're buying it because you bought an M200 or a Ronin 2 or an Inspire 2 and you've got enough batteries that warrant getting something like this. So the 1199 is likely not an obstacle for you. And if you're like me on my Inspire 2, at the time that I bought it, when it first came out with everything in it, the 480 gig SSDs, the raw licenses, all of that, we could have about 11,000 bucks. A fully equipped Ronin 2 with everything that you're gonna need, you're gonna have follow focus and everything on there as well, probably 10 to $13,000. So the cost to maintain your batteries and 12 batteries of that at $11.99 and the time that this is gonna save you, not an obstacle. So I don't think that $11.99 is really a price barrier. Sounds expensive if this isn't a unit for you, but if it is for you, it's just the cost of production and um, the build quality on here is absolutely rock solid. I mean, even though this, like this is a really tough plastic in here, metal radiators and all of the heating stuff, all of the circuitry that's built in, all of the smarts that's built in, the stuff that it can save you time with is um, well worth it. Weight, fully loaded. I wanna say it's somewhere in about 30 pounds if you have all the batteries and everything else. Well within carry-on size. This is not something that's gonna be called out by the airline as being too big to um, carry on. You're not gonna have any issues with that. I will tell you, TSA gets a little freaked out when they see this for the first time. Um, I've now traveled with it a few times and it goes through every single time they ask me to open it up. I open it up, they see this screen. They see it loaded with batteries and then they see buttons on here that are, you know, driving them crazy with these big radiators and they want me to explain. I've had them one time have me powered up and just show them how it works. That could have just been somebody curious. It's also a concept that I fully don't get TSA. Why, if you think that this thing is suspicious, would you have me plug it in and turn it on and run you through it? If it's something that's going to do something, that's probably the last case scenario that you want to do. It's just like all the water that you have us throw into the bins and, um, it put right by everybody else, right? So um, anyway, this is something that TSA hasn't really seen. And when I explain it to them, hey, these are drone batteries. I'm a, I'm a pilot. This is how I charge them and discharge them. And then the couple times that I have turned it on, I've turned them on and showed them how I've taken them down to 25% charge for transport. They love it. They're great. I haven't had anybody really give me a hard time other than when they first look at it going, um, we have no idea what this is, but not an issue. Overall, um, haven't had any real issues with that, just the questions, but fantastic solution. And DJI, thank you so much for sending this out. So this was supplied by DJI, but I'm not getting paid by them. Um, nothing, they supplied this, had me run through it, had me use it for a while. 
Um, I love it. I'm picking one up. The, uh, the time that I'll save with my Crystal Sky, with my sentence, with my batteries, more than pays for itself.